Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on low dropout regulator modeling with XModel. In this tutorial, we'll demonstrate how you can easily and effectively model the transient, DC, and AC characteristics of low dropout regulators using XModel. This tutorial corresponds to the application note, Low Dropout Regulator Modeling with XModel, located in the application notes section of the Scientific Analog website. Let's begin by downloading the package associated with the application note. On the Scientific Analog website, in the application notes section, you'll see modeling examples. Scroll down to Low Dropout Regulator Modeling and click the package link. The tar package will download to the downloads folder of your Linux environment. Let's decompress the files. We'll do a tar, zx, vf, and then the name of the file. We will decompress to a folder called LDO. Let's then move the folder to our home directory. Finally, we'll source the setup script in that folder. We'll type source etc forward slash setup dot bash rc for a bash cell. Next, let's open up Cadence and look at the circuits and test benches we'll be modeling. When the command interpreter window opens, Let's go to Tools and then Library Manager. The circuits are located in the LDO folder. As described in the tutorial lecture slides, LDOs use the principles of negative feedback to have the output voltage, V out, follow the reference voltage, V ref. They commonly come in two types. One version uses a PMOS pass element as part of a PMOS driver, while the other uses an NMOS pass element as part of an NMOS driver. Both types use an air amplifier as part of the feedback loop to help adjust V out to follow VREF. Next, let's examine the air amplifier. We can model it using a linear circuit macro model. The macro model uses a voltage-controlled current source with transconductance, GM, that outputs a current to a resistive and capacitive output impedance with resistance R out and capacitance C out. The diodes limit the output voltage to V power and V ground. To shape the loop dynamics of our PMOS driver LDO, we use a compensation capacitance, CC. This results in an open loop transfer function with two poles and one zero. As the feedback is unity gain, the open loop transfer function is also the loop gain of our feedback loop. For this example, we've chosen the values of transconductance, resistances, and capacitances, and we can plot and determine the unity gain frequency and phase margin. The package comes with a Python script, shows that we have a unity gain frequency of seven and a half gigahertz and a phase margin of 79.2 degrees. We can run the, the Python script from the Python interpreter in XModel. From our Linux shell, type xmodel pi ldo underscore pdrv dot pi, the name of the script. The script runs plotting the open loop transfer function and showing a unity gain frequency of 7.5 gigahertz and a phase margin of 79.2 degrees. Next, let's run the test benches associated with the tutorial to examine the transient, DC, and AC characteristics of our LDOs at the reference, line, and load. From Glister, open the test bench editor. From the pull down menu, let's select TB underscore ref underscore step, and then we'll open the cell view associated with the test bench.
you'll notice that the LDO DRV P underscore P DRV is our DUT with a constant 2.5 volt line voltage supplied by the DC gen primitive. We'll apply a voltage step using the step gen primitive. The step goes from 1.25 volts to 1.75 volts with a starting delay of one nanosecond, a pulse width of two nanoseconds, and period of four nanoseconds. Let's run the simulation by clicking the Run Simulation button. And when complete, we can plot the result by clicking the Plot Waveforms button. You'll notice that the output follows the reference step. Now, let's select the TB underscore ref underscore TF DC test bench that measures the DC transfer function between VREF and VOUT. Opening the test bench, you'll see the use of the probe DC primitive, which is an X model primitive that allows users to generate a voltage stimulus and record the results to a text file. Selecting the primitive and hitting the Q bind key you'll see the properties of the primitive. It starts by applying a, con a stimulus at 0.0, .0 volts and ends at 2.5 volts in 100 millivolt, 0.1 volt steps. The file saves the results to a text file, probe underscore DC dot dat. Running the simulation and plotting the results, we see that our regulator is able to track the reference to just below our supply voltage, 2.5 volts. Now, let's select the TB underscore ref underscore TF AC test bench that measures the AC transfer function between VREF and VOUT. Here, we use the probe AC primitive that allows us to apply an AC stimulus between a range of frequencies and record the results to a text file. Selecting the primitive and hitting the Q bind key al allows us to see that our results are saved to a text file, probe underscore AC dot dat. We apply a, a DC offset of 1.5 volts with a 10 millivolt AC stimulus from 10 megahertz to 100 gigahertz. Running the simulation and plotting the result shows that we have a closed loop bandwidth of 3.3 gigahertz. Now, we can look at the line regulation characteristics. Selecting the TB underscore line underscore step test bench. And then opening its cell view. We see that we now apply a voltage step at our line. Running the simulation and plotting the results, we see that our regulator is unable to maintain a constant voltage at the transitions in line voltage. Now we can examine our line regulation with the DC sweep in line voltage. We see that we moved the probe DC primitive to our line.
Looking at the simulation results, we see that our regulator is only able to track our 1.5 volt reference when the line is above 1.6 volts. Finally, let's examine the AC transfer function from line to V out. This is our power supply rejection ratio, PSRR, across frequency. We see that as the frequency increases, our PSRR degrades. Finally, let's look at the load regulation capabilities. Let's start with the TB load step test bench. You'll notice that now, we use a controlled current source, I source, at our load and apply a step using the step gen primitive. The step will go from 0 amps to 100 milliamps. The simulation results show that our regulator is not able to maintain a constant voltage at the transitions. Next, let's examine the DC load regulation transfer function with the TB, TB underscore load underscore TF DC test bench. You'll again see the use of the probe DC primitive. The simulation results show a slight decrease in DC output voltage as the DC current increases from zero to 100 milliamps. Looking at the AC load regulation test bench, TB underscore load underscore TFAC, you'll again see the use of the probe AC primitive. Simulation results show the regulator's ability to maintain a constant voltage across frequency due to small AC fluctuations in the load current degrades as the frequency increases. As previously mentioned, LDOs also have an NMOS driver version. The open loop transfer function is given by this formula with two poles. Again, the open loop transfer function is equivalent to the loop gain here, as we have unity gain feedback and the output back. We can select parameters and plot the transfer function in Python to find a unity gain frequency of 7.5 gig, 4 gigahertz and a phase margin of 80.1 degrees. Opening the schematic for the NMOS driver, we'll see that we now have an NMOS pass element. If we open our test bench editor, you'll see the exact same list of test benches as before for the PMOS driver version. Just examining one of the test benches, you'll see that all that has changed was simply the dot. Everything else remains identical between the two types of LDOs.
In this tutorial, we've demonstrated how to model low dropout regulators using XModel and measure the transient, DC, and AC characteristics at the reference, line, and load. We've also demonstrated how to simplify the measurement of the DC and AC transfer functions using the probe DC and probe AC primitives. Thank you for watching.